So I'll go ahead and kick it off. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? <laughs> Good. Okay. If you don't mind, I would love to see just in the chat as we um, kind of go along and, and talk about some different resources for history um, majors, if you're looking for a full time, if you're considering research, if you're searching for an internship, feel free to go ahead and just pop that in the chat and whether or not you are um, a graduate student or undergraduate student um, will be pretty helpful. So I'll just have you go ahead and just pop that in the chat for us. And while you're doing that, I guess I can give a brief overview um, of my role. I'm uh, I serve as an associate director here in the Career Center. Um, I provide one-on-one -on -one counseling um, advice as well as helping you develop your materials, whether that be your resume, your cover letter, or maybe you're gearing up for an interview. So all of those wonderful services um, are available to you as Villanova students. So uh, as, oh great, I see a few here in the chat. So we have teaching, we have some looking for an internship. Um, so today, what we're going to do is cover um, some type of linear career paths, um, and as well as some examples of what you could see yourself doing in the future, whether that be full-time or internship, um, and then also some uh, non-linear career paths that maybe you haven't had a chance to really um, consider. Um, so there's so many opportunities out there and so many skill sets um, as history majors that you could utilize. So I'll go ahead and kick it off to the next slide, Kate. Great, thank you. So, um, so as I see here in the chat, we have a graduate student like for fellowship, full time. Okay, great. So a lot of the examples here for these linear career paths that I wanted to go over. So um, advanced, so as an advanced degree, um, maybe you're pursuing um, a, a PhD. You're already in the process of um, receiving your master's degree. Um, this is a great opportunity to, um, you know, really give you an opportunity to apply for uh, more upper, upper level um, opportunities. So whether that be um, applying for, um, whether that be applying for um, graduate or professional school, um, or depending on if you are, <clears throat> um, again, thinking of those upper division, there's some really great resources for that. Again, this is a standard or linear career path that you might take. Um, so with that, you are going to have great research skills, attention to detail, um, and some strategies for that is just really reviewing and visiting. If you aren't there yet, um, reviewing and visiting different graduate and professional schools that you could see yourself pursuing. Um, and I also see some in the teaching as well. And that's probably one of the most more common that you might imagine, um, whether that be going into a professorship. Um, but there's some really fulfilling fulfilling careers within either K-12 or higher education. <clears throat> so as Kate, as a history major herself, um, is in ed, uh, student administration or higher education administration. So that's another great opportunity um, there. So um, primary or secondary education, if you're really passionate about teaching, there's also library services. Um, advising. So there's so many different facets in where you can utilize your knowledge and background um, as a history major if you did want to pursue that. Archival in uh, archival work or say, say you want to be an archivist or maybe you want to perhaps work in a museum. So <clears throat> as an archivist, you're, you're gonna be utilizing skills like analyzing, classifying, and really describing materials in their collections. Um, you are utilizing your research skills um, to really, um, to, to understand what that particular organization might need. And most of these are really entry-level positions, but depending on um, upper level administrative roles, you may need a PhD in that. Let me take a chance. Uh, let me take a look in the chat. Okay, great. Um, and then there's also research. So a bachelor's degree um, um, in history can open a lot of doors within research. Um, I always say that as a history major, you are um, the expert detective um, when it comes to that because there's so much research and practical skills that you're gaining from that. So there's organizational and communication skills. Um, I think 
fundraising is something that perhaps you might not really think about, but it is plays a lot um, as a role um, within history as a as a as another career. So fundraising, you're often working for nonprofits, um, and um, utilizing again your research and communication skills and able to really articulate the bigger picture for an organization. Or perhaps you're um, working on a political campaign and you are looking to um, research issues so you can articulate that to the public. And so I just wanna give some realistic examples <clears throat> um, here that we have in Handshake. So yes, Handshake is your, gonna be your go-to resource. I'm gonna put that plug in there as well. Um, and I'll definitely pop that um, in the chat. So Handshake is your go-to. Um, you have access to this um, <clears throat> as a student, as well as an alum. Um, so these are just uh, a few that I decided to pull that are currently living in Handshake. So for example, uh, the Smithsonian, there are over 30 posted in Handshake. Um, so if you are interested in more of the traditional route, you're looking to work in a museum setting, um, there are um, many opportunities there to uh, work in any Smithsonian at, uh, location. So for this one, you're working with um, <clears throat> you're working with the, the museum system, you're learning about uh, uh, collections management, you're utilizing your digital management skills. And so those are just some of the key things there that that you would that would entail um, for that particular internship, um, the James Jamestown uh, York Foundation, um, it, a gallery interpreter, a gallery tour guide. Again, this is just a way to gain exposure um, to uh, you know different facets of working in a museum setting um, as well. <clears throat> and that is if you're also interested in working customer service skills. So those are things that really come into play if you were going to go that route. And we also have, say, the New York Historical Society. Um, again, that's um, going to be more graduate level, um, I believe. So again, it's exhibition research, uh, exhibition research um, utilizing Excel databases. Um, again, it's a lot of communication, administration, um, and being able to really um, be able to upkeep a lot of paperwork there. So this is more of a graduate level opportunity for those that are um, on this call that are um, graduate students. And then even uh, prospect research. So the American Museum of Natural History. Um, so they have a, um, a fair amount of research opportunities. So, and kind of going back to that um, fundraising aspect. So for example, a major gifts officer or prospect research, perhaps you're really great at uh, developing and maintaining relationships. So um, you're in, uh, informing effective engagement, um, for that ideal candidate, you have exceptional written communication skills. Um, and again, being able to articulate what are the goals of that particular organization. So I just wanted to give you a nice snapshot of, yes, we do have opportunities there in Handshake, and we'll go through some additional resources as we go through this workshop and this presentation. Jakira, thank you so much for that wonderful overview of linear career paths related to a degree in history. Hello and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kate Szymanski, as an Andrina so nicely shared. I serve as the Director of Professional Development and Internships in our Office for Undergraduate Students in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. And I also, like Jakira said, was a history major at Villanova as an undergrad. And I also earned a master's degree in American history at Villanova. Um, so history is absolutely near and dear to my heart. Just quickly, um, I launched my career in the area of PR and communications, and then I quickly pivoted to journalism. I'm a person, a historian, who firmly believe that what a reporter produces that writing, that editing, that research, that is a primary source of history. And for me, it was so incredibly powerful um, to work in that journalism space as a reporter and to be quote, doing history, but in a very different way. Um, so I um, enjoy as well drawing these connections today for students in the role that I currently inhabit at Villanova in helping all of our liberal arts and sciences students see themselves in a variety of professions. And here we're looking at nonlinear career paths for history majors, some of which include, and this is not an exhaustive list at all, 
management consulting. Perhaps you're a problem solver. Perhaps just like Jakira described, you are the ultimate detective, that researcher, someone who can find information, relevant, factually based information quickly, cite sources appropriately, discern fact from fiction, discern a reliable source versus one that is unreliable and put together reports that could help a company, an individual, a firm realize its goals. That in essence is what a consultant does. And we at Villanova are so very fortunate that many mid-sized and large consulting firms come to our campus to recruit students. So while you're on Handshake, my suggestion is within your profile, go to my career interests, why not click on management consulting as a potential interest? That way, Handshake will automatically send to you internships, events, entry-level jobs that it thinks might interest you. So consulting, one nonlinear career path for historians, but there are others from financial services, including investment banking, opportunities on Wall Street. And Jakira, I'll quickly plug the four upcoming um, Wall Street meetup events. So many of those roles have analysts in the title. Banks are looking, again, for excellent researchers, people who can gather relevant and factual information. Perhaps you see yourself working at a Wall Street firm. By attending these Wall Street meetup events, you put yourself in that position to be a viable candidate. You'll learn about upcoming deadline dates, for example. You'll learn about the variety of roles that firms are seeking to fill. Journalism. I already described journalism for you. That's where I got my start. And journalism is one of these paths that in terms of recruiting interns for the summer, let's say, we're not going to see opportunities pop up on Handshake until a little bit later in the semester. Some of the larger entities like the NPRs of the world already have begun recruiting their interns for the summer. Those deadlines are a little bit earlier, but there are so many other smaller news organizations, local newspapers that absolutely still exist in certain parts of this country that are looking to hire interns and entry-level people. So reporting, editing, journalism, these are great keywords for you to search within Handshake and other search engines, but also fields for you to think about entering. Communications writ large, thinking about public relations, advertising, marketing, very writing intensive careers. These are all at times very, very appealing to historians. After all, who is going to research the competition? Who best to do that than a historian who understands how to research thoroughly and then what we can learn from that information? How do we make decisions based upon sound information? Data analysis for many of the same reasons. Perhaps you're the historian who enjoys and has experience in quantifying information and mathematics and statistics is part of your academic experience at Villanova. Roles in data analysis might interest you as well. The legal professions, going on to law school is often a very popular route for not only political science students, but also English majors and yes, history majors. So maybe working in a field related to justice accountability is one that interests you. Public policy and government service, again, these are nonlinear career paths, but we've discovered in our work, Shakira and I, that many history majors gravitate towards these types of roles. I will very much appreciate this quote shared by the history department at UC Davis in California. Historical study plays an important part in fostering well-rounded intellectual development, as well as instilling value career skills in research, writing, argumentation, and documentation. Um, I think that encapsulates much of what Jakira and I um, are sharing with you at this wonderful LePage Center workshop today. I also want to share with you, as Jakira did, some recent and relevant examples on Handshake. These are 
active and live right now waiting for students just like you to apply. Barton Associates is looking for an entry level consultant. The Association for Community Empowerment Solutions is looking for a gender equality data collaborative intern. Vanguard has many, many entry-level financial services focused roles available on Handshake right now. Vanguard happens to be in Villanova's backyard. It's its flagship headquarters in Malvern, but it also has a, a large presence um, in Scottsdale, Arizona. Vanguard might be a company that interests you. The U.S. State Department, there are a variety of entry-level roles currently being promoted on Handshake. Those announcements on Handshake lead you to the USA jobs usajobs.gov website to complete applications. TRC Companies is a consulting firm and it specifically is looking for non-technical interns in marketing, HR, and other corporate functions. The Pittsburgh Community Broadcasting Corporation, so non NPR affiliated station in Pittsburgh is looking for a show production intern for the summer. So these are among the many, many opportunities that are available right now on Handshake from a variety of different industries that don't necessarily maybe come immediately to mind when we think of the study of history and where a history major may want to land someday. Jakira, how about I pass the baton to you? Do you want to talk about these other internship and job resources? Yes. So the um, American Historical Association, um, of course, is a definitely a go-to spot for um, those that are majoring in history. Um, there's a great careers page, as well as a, a breakdown of a variety of uh, di diversity careers in terms of various industries that you could go into as well. Um, there's a um, newsletter that you could sign up for, just so you're also staying abreast to um, what's going on in a particular industry of interest. So um, that's always a great go-to in creating an account with the AH AHA. Um, and um, again, there's a, a number of resources in within Handshake, um, but I wanted to focus on the two that are more, um, I think would be very helpful for you. Um, not only do you have Handshake where you can set up a, a safe search where you can get notifications, as Kate mentioned, you can fill out your career interests and receive more catered um, communication from the Career Center based off of events and opportunities that we would recommend that you apply to or attend. Um, but we also have Career Shift. Um, I'm a huge fan of career shift, especially if you are not open to, or if you are open to um, interning or working outside of um, the Philadelphia, New Jersey, um, New York area. So if you're open to, um, you know, something more na national, uh, nationwide, um, there's a lot of opportunities in there as well. There's a lot of great remote opportunities too. So um, if you're looking for something that has more flexibility, there's a number of remote opportunities in career shift as well. And the neat thing about career shift is that you can also search for company contacts. So it's a great way to follow up when you are in the process of an internship or job search. Um, and you can also search for Villanova alums. So I would say that many of our students um, that do receive an internship or a full-time job offer, it's either through on-campus recruiting, when we have employers here um, interviewing on campus, the career fair, um, and then there's also our strong alumni network. Um, so career shift is a great way to also search for that. And even if you're in graduate school, if you right, if you maybe you didn't attend Villanova for graduate school, you can search for um, you can search for your alma mater as well. So it's not just um, Villanova and career shift. So it's a really great tool to follow up, make connections, um, and find some leads. And then there's also LinkedIn. And again, kind of going back to that alumni piece. Um, you get jobs and internships by talking to people. That's what I always like to say in my appointments. Um, but networking is so um, key. And uh, in Villanova just has a really great network where you can, maybe you want to browse a, a recent graduate and see where did they previously intern? Oh, this looks really interesting. Maybe I could, you know, reach out um, and inquire about what their experience was. Um, or perhaps you're in the process of applying for a PhD program um, for you to get some better insight too. So 
LinkedIn is a really great tool. And that's something if you don't have a LinkedIn, we're also happy to help you build that out um, as well. And then with the Career Center, I did put in the chat, um, if you were interested in or considering pre-law, um, <clears throat> we do offer pre-law advising. We recently um, hired a new pre-law advisor. Her name is Alex Cardlesis. Um, you can always book an appointment with her in Handshake. And if you're... Um, interested, you can also sign up for our newsletter as well. So you're up to date on law school fairs, different workshops. Um, what are the, what's the process of applying if you are considering that um, as well and building out a timeline. So that's just a snapshot of this. This isn't all of the resources. We have plenty of resources, but these are the key ones that um, I wanted to share today. And I guess I'll roll into the career fair too. <laughs> So um, with the, the career fair, yes, um, that is happening next week. Feel free to take out your phone if you want to go ahead and scan um, the QR code. It'll take you uh, directly to um, registering for a career fair. So um, these are more industry focused versus having um, our, um, our larger um, career fair. So uh, for, for February 1st, we have our fine finance, accounting, consulting. The second, we have a STEM-focused um, in industry career fair. Um, and then we also have one for comm media marketing on February 3rd. So I would say this is probably the most diverse set of employers that we've had to date, especially with um, the career fair being virtual. Um, I feel like it opens up a lot of opportunities um, for you to, again, consider companies that maybe you haven't necessarily um, thought, thought of um, as well, but just to, to name a few um, for um, if you're more on like the business industry, um, we do have um, Grant Thornton, Incura, um, Pro um, for communications. We have Stitch Fix, CMI Media, uh, Gregory FCA, um, as well as for STEM. <clears throat> there are a number of, of opportunities there as well. Um, so just, um, taking the time review, um, review the positions, review the company and see, maybe you could see yourself being there. Maybe this could be a great fit. And again, happy to walk you through that process, um, as well, but you have an opportunity to meet one-to-one, -one, um, for 10 minutes with the recruiter. I think that's the benefit of it being virtual too. So it's, it's not as overwhelming. Um, you get that one-on-one -on -one FaceTime with your recruiter um, and learning a little bit more about their company and opportunities. And again, sharing the skill sets that you can also offer um, their organization as a history major. Thank you, Jakira. Yeah, just to underscore what Jakira said about the um, importance of participating in these virtual career fairs um, and the kind of, you know, extraordinary moment in time that we're living in as we're still, you know, in the throngs of the COVID-19 pandemic, how we've seen the complete acceleration of changes we had already seen occurring in the world of work. So just what Shakira mentioned about companies that potentially weren't on your radar, maybe solely because of geographical constraints. You want to build your life and livelihood in a certain part of the United States or elsewhere. And company X can't be on your radar because you geographically cannot be in that place. Well, we're living in this moment in time where geography might matter a lot less. So we have seen so many more students, for example, intern for a variety of different firms from the comfort of their own residence hall at Villanova, but for firms all over the nation. So if you are willing to keep your minds opened, as I know historians naturally are inclined to do, then this could be your moment in time to, to, to discover a path, a role that surprises and delights you at the same time and allows you to perform very meaningful work um, for an organization or a cause that is incredibly important to you and our world. So we also want to talk here about transferable skills across all the career paths we discussed with you today, the linear as well as nonlinear. And this might be um, the most challenging aspect for students when it comes to thinking about their educational experiences and how they relate to the world of work. We want you to think about the skills that you have developed as a historian 
your analytical skills. You know, similar to what Jakira said as we kicked off today, uh, putting a little notation in the chat, feel free to do that here at this time. Can you maybe think of a project that you worked on as a history major that compelled you to use analytical skills, skills related to analysis, comparing information, contrasting information, and then making a decision based upon that information. And if you don't wanna put this in the chat, maybe you just jot it down for your own self. You've developed exceptional oral and written communication skills in your courses. Think of real life examples of that through maybe not only your classwork as a history major, but also your involvement on campus through different activities, through different part-time work experiences, previous internships, how have you developed your oral and written communication skills and be able to provide examples for someone with whom you're speaking? You have a detailed oriented approach to your work and that is decidedly distinctive to history majors. Oftentimes when we possess a skill, we think everyone else does too. Everyone must be as detail oriented because because I am what makes me so special. This is a truly unique skill set and we want our very humble historians during this process of searching for work to maybe be slightly less humble and to confidently shout it from the rooftops in your own unique humble way, of course, but be confident about the skills that you possess and your detail oriented approach to accomplishing tasks and projects. Your experience presenting research and using technology to do so, superior, superior. You can work independently as well as on teams. This is another area to accentuate on your applications or when you're thinking about what type of industry would allow me to thrive. Maybe you equally enjoy working independently as well as with others on team projects. Your excellent interpersonal and problem solving skills, I highlighted that as it related to consulting careers, but truly, Jakira, myself, Andrina, we solve problems all the time on the job. Um, and it's articulating, what are some of the problems I solved? What was my approach? How did I gather information so that I was presenting viable solutions to challenges I face or my team faces or my students face? Your ability to meet deadlines in fast paced environments. You're not taking one course, two courses, three courses. Some of you are taking five or six courses. Some of you are also working. You're involved in clubs as well. Well, some of you are graduate students who maybe hold an assistantship as well as study here, or you are studying here as a grad student and you're holding down a different full-time job. You're able to meet deadlines, work in these fast-paced environments, and that is a skill employers seek across numerous industries. Lastly here, we have a systematic understanding of human institutions. This is fascinating to me. This comes, I think, from that place of valuing and appreciating context and that realization that, okay, here is where we are. I didn't just poof appear or these problems or challenges that institutions face. One day we didn't open our eyes and there is the problem. There is a historic context behind this. Having that institutional systemic understanding of challenges, of inequalities, et cetera, is an asset to any employer's operations. Our job as higher education career professionals is to help you best describe and articulate and create your narrative. What is that for you? How is it that you will be a, a valuable addition to any employer's team? I think that's something that students who study history are particularly good at articulating. And we want to partner with you to help you do that. 
Lastly, Jakira, I'm happy to take it here before we maybe open it up to some questions um, our students may have. Um, students, you are so very welcome to contact the University Career Center, which is located in Gary Hall, um, 117. It is a beautiful, fairly newly renovated suite. It is quite lovely. You will find Jakira there. You can make appointments with career counselors through the Handshake platform. As you already know, there are so many things you can do and discover on Handshake from the many resources like Career Shift that Jakira described to you, to making appointments, to learning about upcoming events, to indicating your career interests so that you receive relevant information to your inbox or as notifications on your Handshake app, which you can download to your phone as well. Careers.villanova.edu is the Career Center website, and it too is an information hub. You will find resources related to resume writing, cover letter writing, building LinkedIn profiles, and much, much more. So it is a extraordinarily valuable place to visit. And quickly, I will plug just a little bit some of the offerings through my office in the office for undergraduate students. We offer a one credit course program. Jakira teaches in it, and I'm so happy that she does, um, called Arts and Sciences Professional Development, ASPD. And in these one credit courses, which are graded satisfactory or unsatisfactory, we help undergraduate students in a 10-week course learn the fundamentals of how to search, how to discover internship and entry-level jobs, and how best to prepare for them. We actually even peel back the layers of the onion and help students realize, what are my interests? What am I good at? And then what are the problems in this world that need solutions, that need people like me to devote their time, energy, and interests? So our fall 2022 ASPD course offerings will be available to you come registration, which occurs sometime in March of this year. So I encourage all students add an ASPD course to your schedule for the fall. It will compel you um, because it's part of your schedule to keep these con career conversations in focus. Every week you will meet with your instructor who is a career professional who will help you navigate this world. And that weekly reminder and partnership you will establish with your instructor is invaluable. So look for us on the master's schedule, Arts Sciences, professional development. You can see our courses. You can see what we're offering this semester. I teach every Friday this term an ASPD course focused exclusively on learning about the field of management consulting. We have some extraordinary alums and recruiters from firms like EY and Deloitte and Alpha Sites and BCG, the Boston Consulting Group, come into our classroom of a mere 16 students to learn all about these incredible career paths. What do I hear time and time again? These pathways are open to students from all academic majors. So I think that as in terms of um, ending our formal part of this workshop, I think both Jakira and I want you to know that. Look for opportunities on Handshake that are available for students from all academic majors. These are employers who are extraordinarily open-minded and understand that a liberal education is phenomenal preparation for nearly any career.